Hi, and welcome to my channel. And welcome to the second part of street photography for the nervous. And I shall be also going a bit into the new lens I have got for my screw mount Leica, which is the F2.5 Voigtlander Color Scopal. Let's get into it. As I said in part one, I'm not the most confident and outgoing street photographer out there. Um, it all feels a little bit um, dangerous to me. And that's coming from somebody who's uh, done professional photography for many years. There's um, techniques, however, uh, which are supposed to make things easier. And I thought I would try out some of the ones that you see vaunted on YouTube and in other places and see how I get on with them. Essentially, there are three main techniques. The first one is commonly known as fishing. And for that, you don't need a rod. Um, what you actually do need is to find an interesting background and kind of camp out near it. Um, not literally with a tent, but you know, just stay there for a long period of time and wait for someone to drift into that picture and complete it. Well, I tried that. Um, I tried that actually with the um, XA when I went out and I found that one to be, for me, a little bit boring. And also I felt more conspicuous standing in one place um, in a crowd than gradually moving along, which everyone else was doing. The second technique um, I didn't really try, uh, that was following. That is finding an interesting subject and following them and waiting until they put themselves into an interesting position or situation. Now, I kind of figured that was a little bit um, intrusive and so I didn't actually try that one, I'll be honest. Um, I just didn't feel that was me. This brings me on to my most comfortable method, which I would describe as walk, shoot and hope. And that is to quietly walk around and walk a route and look for interesting things that present themselves as you go. The main trick to this, I believe, um, and I'm still exploring this one, is to walk fairly slowly. Um, one of my favorite authors, Terry Pratchett, described the walk of a city policeman as being proceeding. And that is a quiet, measured walk that allows you to look around you and see everything without attracting too much attention. My equipment of choice for part two of this challenge to myself was going to be my 1938 Leica 3B. But um, actually, another Leica presented itself to me at a very, very reasonable price indeed. So reasonable that I couldn't really refuse it. And this is a 1946 Leica 3C. Um, this one, a bit of an unknown quantity to me. Um, I hadn't really been able to shoot much test film on it before I took it out on the walk. I took it out with the color Scopar, which is currently on my 3B. And it showed up a couple of issues, which probably means I'm going to have to have this old girl um, cleaned, lubricated and adjusted or serviced, as we used to call it. Um, but it's a nice camera to use. And so that's what I used. Uh, it's also an interesting Leica because it's got um, an engraving on the base plate, which has been largely sanded off, which is a shame, um, but it is legible. And I'll put it up on the screen. Um, it uh, says that the um, camera was originally owned by a Major George A. Patterson of the Signal Corps US Army. Um, quite fascinating and feels like a bit of history in my hand. Um, I wonder 
you know, where he served, where he bought this, where his family are now. Anyway, um, I took this and had a few issues, um, but we'll come on to that after we see the pictures. I used zone focusing all the way through those images, uh, setting the color scope bar on about three meters, a little bit under if I thought the subject was a little bit closer, a little bit over three meters if I thought the subject was a bit further away. And this certainly seems to have worked out very, very well. Um, the little viewfinder that you see on there, which is a very, very cheap one from um, eBay, uh, was about I think 21 pounds or something like that. Um, quite acceptable, a little bit distorted, um, but quite acceptable for this sort of shooting. Um, in general, I found that technique worked really well. I didn't really miss focus on anything, which I thought I might, and I found that very, very handy. The copy of the color scope bar that I've got doesn't have a focusing tab, and it doesn't have tabs for the aperture ring. And I found that a bit difficult. The, the little focusing ring is a bit small, but obviously with zone focusing, you're not particularly moving that a great deal. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get one of those stick on tabs for this um, version. Absolutely fantastic lens. As you will see from the pictures, it has modern levels of contrast. Um, absolutely brilliant. I'm very, very pleased with it indeed. Now to the issues with my new Leica, or new to me. I was very pleased when it turned up that all of the shutter speeds seem to be working nicely and accurately. This is um, a second, which certainly seems around the second mark. Um, and the first test roll I've put through um, actually turned out very well indeed. There was one slight problem, which was um, very occasionally when I pointed the camera into the sun and took a photograph, um, there was some film fogging. Um, a bar, um, I would say hourglass shaped, wider at the top and wider at the bottom of fogging, that um, was in the middle of the frame and wasn't on every image, uh, was on just ones that were shot very, very full on into the sun. And I believe that's a shutter curtain transparency issue. Um, it does go on to the um, 
sides of the film onto the sprocket holes so somehow light is getting in there and getting round. Um, I believe this is a very common Leica thing. Um, I try to keep the lens cap on when I'm not shooting but when you're shooting straight it's very difficult to do that. There is um, a sort of, um, well you'll, you'll see when I um, put the image up, there's a sort of um, slight um, problem on the shutter curtain with a, a piece of folded fabric. Whether that's responsible for it or not, I don't know. But I'm going to put this in the hands of somebody capable shortly. Um, it's actually 90% of the photographs it takes fine. So I'm not going to worry too much about it, but I'm going to send it off for um, a good old service um, in the near future. Oh, it has a slightly dim rangefinder patch as well. Well, actually quite a dim rangefinder patch. Still usable, but this is an interesting thing that my 1938 model has a very bright and very clear viewfinder patch although it's obviously taken quite a bit of wear in its day um, and this would lend credence to things that I've heard about the just post-war Leicas not being of the same quality as the pre-war ones um, perhaps the half silvering wasn't as good um, maybe they were rushed out a bit quicker but Anyway, this will be serviced and sorted out in good time. There'll be lots more interesting stuff coming up in part three of this mini-series. I shall be taking out oh, possibly my little Zorky one and trying the 50mm lens. Um, and I may be doing some stuff shooting from the hip with SLR, which I've done quite successfully with the 24 millimeter lens in the past. Um, that allows you to get very, very close and we'll see if we can get some interesting results from that. So as usual, if you enjoyed this episode, then perhaps you'll hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, then perhaps you'll subscribe. If you want to support the channel even further, then Go and have a look at my Patreon account and you can always buy me a cup of coffee because I drink lots of coffee and take a look at my website and all the other good things that you'll find in the description. So until I see you again, take care of yourselves and keep taking pictures.